percent. Well, we kind of passed that, didn't we? We're not quite double that, but we're past that. So growth exceeded what he thought it would uh, it would be. It took the first three a thousand years of recorded history to accomplish the first doubling of population. One hundred years for the last doubling, but the next doubling will require only 50 years. As a matter of fact, it required less than that. And the path we're on, you know, we're just going to have increasing numbers of people while we have in decreasing supplies of energy to support them. Uh, the next chart, another quote from, uh, uh, from Hyman Rickover. You know, reading this, after 1980, when you could look back and see that M. King Hubbard was really right about the United States, shouldn't our leadership have sat down and said, gee, what are we going to do about that? One final thought. I should like to leave with you. High energy consumption has always been a prerequisite of political power. The tendency is for political power to be concentrated in an ever smaller number of countries, ultimately the nation with, which control the largest energy resources will become dominant. If we give thought to the problem of energy resources, if we act wisely and in time to conserve what we have and prepare well for necessary future changes, we shall ensure the dominant position for our own country. Have we done any of that? This is the father of our nuclear submarine, Hyman Rickover. Great advice. The next chart gives a perspective that Hyman Rickover uh, talked about. And this looks at the um, age of oil. It goes back to 1630. It could go back to uh, the time of Christ and the chart wouldn't change because the amount of energy we were using, the world was using, was so small it wouldn't show above the baseline here. And then we entered the industrial age. The brown line there is uh, wood. We started with steam engines and fueling them with wood, and then we found coal, and that's the black line there. And then we found gas and oil. Wow, look what happened when we found gas and oil. Now, we're going to see this curve again and we're going to see it again and again. A very steep rise with this uh, very long time in the abscissa, that rise is really very steep. We'll see some other charts where we have stretched out the time and the rise is not so steep. But notice what happens at the very top up there. It fell off and then rose again. That's the recession of the 70s, the Arab oil embargo. You know, you need to thank them for doing that because we woke up. Look what would have happened if that hadn't happened and that exponential curve kept on rising. It would be off the top of the chart. Our next chart shows that um, in a different perspective. This is called the uh, oil chart. And if you had only one chart to look at to inform you, this would probably be the one that you would want to uh, look at. Oh, the curve that we saw in the last one, that red curve, I said you would see it again and again. And here it is. This is the curve. Now, it was very steep there because uh, uh, they had compressed the time, so it went up steep. And this is that drop off in the 70s. Notice what would happen if we hadn't become more efficient as a result of that. This curve would be off the chart by the year 2011. The, uh, Vertical bars here show the discovery of oil. And we started discovering it in the 40s, and boy, in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Huge peak in the 70s. And uh, then by 1980, the black line here represents the uh, use of oil. By 1980, we were using as much oil as we were finding. And after 1980, we always have used more oil than we found that year. But no matter, because there's a huge reserve back here. So we are now filling this space between what we found and what we use by uh, dipping into those reserves that we have. How long will they last? Uh, this chart indicates the future discoveries will be on a, an ever-decreasing slope. It won't be smooth like that because this has been up and down. That'll be up and down. But I want you to make your own judgment as to uh, how much of that we're going to find. By the way, this chart was what, 04 was when this chart was created. And they were predicting that the world was going to reach its maximum oil production uh, probably about, what, uh, 
10 or so there. As a matter of fact, uh, they were somewhat optimistic, as we'll see a bit later, the peak oil production. Ah, oh, the next chart shows some of that.